Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. Today we're going to talk about personality disorders. So uh, Wikipedia gives us the definition, personality disorders are a class of personality types and enduring behaviors associated with significant distress or disability, which appear to devi deviate from social expectations, particularly in relating to others. And this is a definition that's pretty consistent with other uh, definitions that you can see. Uh, the mnemonic medic kind of helps you to remember the main characteristics. These are maladaptive uh, personality types. Uh, they uh, are enduring um, and uh, deviant from, uh, from normal. They're inflexible. These people don't want to change what they're doing. And they cause significant impairment. And uh, I, it also seems to be that they, they lack uh, insight in most cases, so they're, they're unable to see that they're, what they're doing has any relationship to the problems in their life. And uh, it's estimated that this affects around 6% of the world's population. Um, abuse is uh, associated with uh, increased risk, such as uh, sexual abuse, child abuse, uh, will increase risk for some of these behaviors. But uh, but it could uh, appear in, in all kinds of different situations. So there's three main categories of personality disorders. The weird, the wild, the worried, wimpy. These are cluster A, which is paranoid, distrustful, or suspicious. So these people are always worried that uh, that the people around them have bad motives. So... They'll, uh, they'll be suspicious of their doctor. They'll, they'll worry that their doctor is giving them uh, medication uh, for the wrong reasons. They'll be suspicious of their partners, uh, their spouses, etc. Uh, they often think that their uh, spouse is cheating on them or uh, that their business partner is, uh, is stealing from them. And they don't, they don't seem as... Uh, uh, typically scared, they just kind of assume that these bad things are going on around them um, and they kind of set up defenses around it. Schizoid, these are the people that just really don't seem to care about other people. Uh, they really keep to themselves, they seem detached, they don't really show a lot of emotion. And uh, we'll talk about avoidant here in a second. These these can easily be confused because a lot of time both these both these types are, are kind of loners, but for different reasons. The avoidant personalities would, would probably really like to have friends, but they are afraid that nobody will like them. And the schizoids, they probably just don't really care as much. So I've tried to think about why we use the, pref uh, the part of the word sk schiz. You know, usually that refers to something having to do with psychosis. And uh, I'm guessing that it has to do with the fact that these are some of the negative symptoms of schizophrenia where uh, patients just are, are detached, don't show much emotion, uh, they have a restricted affect. So um, so they are kind of our, our loners that don't uh, generally show much interest in others. Schizotypal are just kind of the weird people. Uh, you know, you, you remember them from high school, they wore their cape to school and uh, we're just kind of different and um, these people often have just a near uh, psychotic uh, ide ideations um, but uh, but they don't qualify for psychosis they don't have hallucinations um, and their their strange ideas don't really uh, qualify as delusions but they're pretty close and and they've talked about in DSM-5 combining schizotypal with a, as a type of schizophrenia but but there is a significant difference in that there's there's no hallucinations here um, there are the ideas are, are more strange than they are um, uh, backwards or confused so um, these people are, are often uh, treated with antipsychotics um, but there's no good research on that your borderline personality disorders, these are the people with uh, uh, stormy relationships. They, they kind of uh, can fly off the handle about small things. 
they may love you one second and hate you the next second. Um, they uh, they're going to uh, do a lot of the splitting, where you know you're the best doctor in the whole world, and that last doctor I had is the worst doctor in the whole world, and you know you you may be uh, the worst doctor in the wor whole world uh, before too long. They'll kind of split the staff against each other. They can be really sweet to one and, and really mean to the other one. Um, and these people end up uh, a lot of times being suicidal and having a lot of substance abuse issues, uh, which kind of runs throughout a lot of these disorders. Your histrionic uh, personality types, these are more often women, but also can be men. Um, they, they come, uh, uh, you know, Wherever they are, they show up uh, with really flamboyant, uh, provocative clothing on. Um, they're uh, overtly sexual in a lot of cases. Um, and uh, they, they kind of have this uh, theatrical aspect about them. Um, these, these people will uh, often uh, be seductive and, um, and could be, uh, you know, a problem in that way for uh, clinicians, so you have to kind of be careful <laughs> about that. Um, you have your narcissistic. These are your uh, your Donald Trump and um, uh, Rush Limbaugh personalities. Um, they uh, t talk about themselves. They think that they are uh, are the most influential people around them. They're Often they often come with a real sense of entitlement. You know, they they'll walk into the back office uh, and you know open a chart. They'll do um, whatever they feel like doing because they they think that they are that important that they can they can do whatever they want. And there's often a lack of empathy. They're they're not necessarily bad people, uh, but they uh, they feel like they are um, important enough that that they're that other people's problems are not important. And um, there are some that suggest that uh, narcissism and antisocial are kind of in the same spectrum, whereas the antisocial uh, just have the difference that they are, uh, they are kind of uh, more likely to violate others' rights. You know, the, the narcissist may uh, uh, violate others' rights if he has any reason to, um, but uh, antisocial um, will will constantly be violating the rights of others um, with no remorse. Remorse. These are uh, the people in many cases that occupy the prisons. And in order uh, to qualify for antisocial personality disorder, they had to have had a conduct disorder. So as a 15-year-old, they had to be. Um, you know, uh, hurting animals and um, hurting people at school and stealing and lying. And so this, this newer um, classification of antisocial kind of leaves out the adult antisocials that didn't have a, a history in childhood. So, so those people don't really fit into the DSM-4 criteria, even though they look exactly like... Uh, the antisocials that had the conduct disorder. So I wonder what will change with that in the future. But um, but you can have somebody with th these exact same characteristics that, that don't have the history of conduct disorder as a child. As we go to cluster C, we've got obsessive compulsive disorder. In my opinion, I'm, I'm not sure why this wasn't put in cluster A, whereas paranoid might have uh, easily come down to cluster C. Uh, but but I'm sure they had their reasons. But these people are often uh, perfectionists. Uh, they have to do everything uh, just just the way that they think that needs to be done. They have inflexible morals and values. So uh, a lot of times they'll decide what's right and wrong and uh, will not be influenced by anybody else. And some of these people can be extremely successful. There is a difference between uh, obsessive compulsive. Uh, personality disorder and uh, in just a, a obsessive compulsive disorder so we'll we'll maybe talk about that in a different uh, video but uh, these people can have some of the ritualistic type things that the OCD people can but it's but it's more 
just about uh, perfectionism um, and inflexibility, and they often will uh, will be so inflexible that uh, they become uh, they are are not uh, uh, good to work with. So so they often have problems that way. The avoidant personality types we talked about, they get uh, uh, really uh, sensitive about rejection. They, they want people to like them, and they're afraid that they won't be liked, um, and they're just inhibited socially because they, they're afraid of uh, being rejected. And then the dependent personality types, these are the submissive, uh, helpless, or they think they're helpless, if they're the really needy people they kind of cling to um, cling to others a lot of times you'll see these uh, dependent personality types with uh, a narcissist for example um, and uh, so they they kind of will gravitate to strong personality types and, and feel like they need to be taken care of and so as we went through this list um, if uh, if you were not able to identify some of these cr- uh, Characteristics in your own personality, then then you may be uh, a narcissist or uh, antisocial or borderline. Uh, you might be one of these people that really can't see um, your own personality and identify problems. I'm not saying you are, but uh, it's possible. Um, and uh, you you could have these problems and be able to see them too. So so there doesn't have to be a complete lack of insight here. I personally fall into uh, several of these categories uh, pretty pretty neatly, so uh, I, I may end up seeking some treatment for that. Um, the history of these people is often filled with violence, um, especially if you get talk about antisocial or narcissistic. Uh, there's, the, there's violence um, involved um, or your dependent uh, personality types. They, they might be uh, the victims of violence often because they're they're ending up with the wrong types of people. A suicide is common under a lot of these. Uh, borderline, avoidant, um, a lot of these will have uh, have severe depression, and so you end up with uh, suicidality. Um, a lot of bad decision making um, with uh, sex. Uh, you're histrionic. You're narcissistic. Antisocial. These people uh, end up having sex with the wrong people or too many people um, without protection, and uh, they have unplanned pregnancies and get STDs. Mood disorders are are very common uh, among among most of these, and they're often hard to treat for a variety of reasons. We'll talk about a few of those reasons in a second. Substance abuse is rampant through throughout these, uh, especially uh, again the um, a borderline, uh, more of the cluster cluster B, borderline the um, the antisocial, the narcissistic. A lot of these are using drugs, and um, they have uh, a lot of these people just have bad relationships and and problems uh, functioning in uh, in normal society. So the mainstays of treatment are psychotherapy. You probably want to get a lot of these people to uh, a mental health specialist pretty quickly, just because there's uh, there's a lot of things that uh, the regular primary care doctor won't be able to deal with, or that they might think they can deal with, but they uh, they don't have enough experience with. And some of the factors contributing to that are the fact that these people can really consume a practice. You know, you can end up being really preoccupied with a patient without realizing it you know some of these narcissists really demand a lot of attention some of the histrionics uh, uh, may really captivate a clinician and and kind of inspire that uh, uh, that uh, need to to be a savior to to some of these people Um, also a lot of them are bad at compliance you're um, paranoid, think that you're giving the medication uh, to uh, poison them, or they don't trust the drug companies. And then a lot of these people just they don't realize they have a problem. They think that the problem is with other people, 
especially if we talk about borderline personality disorders, they they will often go through life never realizing that they have any type of uh, an effect of on all the bad things that are happening to them. They think that they just have uh, you know bad luck. They're running into bad people. The world is just a bad place. And so they often don't uh, take any responsibility for their own uh, their own problems. So if we missed anything important here, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, that way other people can see what Im information might be lacking. And uh, there's lots of ways that we could use a lot of help, uh, especially with uh, making presentations, working on the website, spreading the word about worldmedicalschool.org. So if you do want to help out, uh, email us at volunteer at worldmedicalschool.org. Thanks.